So what is a rare disease? What does that even mean? And when I first started out, I assumed, well, that's gotta be a clinical definition. That sounds pretty clinical. And it's not. Um, folks at Rocket heard me talk about this just a week and a half ago. It is actually a legal definition. Under federal law, rare disease is defined in this country as a disease that affects fewer than 200,000 people in this country. That's about the population of Montgomery, Alabama. Rare disease is defined differently in Europe and in Japan and in Australia. Um, but irrespective of how rare disease is defined and what number you use, the reality is, especially in this country, even though the upper limit is 200,000, by and large, most rare diseases are far, far fewer than 200,000. We are talking few hundreds to, to few thousands. But as was already mentioned, when you put all the different rare diseases together, and right now they think it's somewhere around 7,000, and we have no idea who measures this or how it's measured or counted. When we were at FDA, we got asked this question all the time. We don't know what the answer is. That's the truth that they're not gonna tell you. <laughs> um, but the reality is, as we learn more about science, there is going to be more and more, there are going to be more and more diseases that meet this criteria. So when you combine it all, and you think about the impact to public health, it's tremendous. So think about that, you know, one in 10 Americans have a rare disease. If you look closely at your family, I guarantee you, you know someone who has been diagnosed with a rare disease. So the impact is profound. Now, despite the fact that there are so many people, when you put them all together, who fit under this bucket of rare diseases, and you will hear this, when you have a mom or a dad and you find out that your kid has a disease that they're not even sure what is wrong with them or what the name of the disease is, you do not care that you are one of 30 million people. You know, you feel alone and you feel like, oh my God, what do I do? And so that sort of brings me to why this day matters and why we're here today. Because this is about understanding that you're not alone and that this is an opportunity for this community, this broad community, which includes us, to come together to remember these patients and families, to honor what they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and to, for, for those of us who are working in this space, to really kind of re-energize and re-motivate and refocus on why we're doing this and why this matters. So I wanted to thank you all for being here, but most, most especially, I wanted to thank our families for being here today. Uh, you all have so much that's already on your plate, so the fact that you were able to carve out time to share your stories with us, I am profoundly grateful, so thank you for doing that. And with that, I, um, you know, my husband texted me this morning, and it was really apt. He said, I suppose one doesn't text Happy Rare Disease Day. So how about here's to an optimistic and productive Rare Disease Day? And I think that's about right.